Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is July 4th and it's my weekly shop update. So if you're here in the US, happy 4th of July. I guess if you're anywhere else, also happy 4th of July. It just happens to be a normal Thursday. <laughs> but uh, if you're here in the US, happy 4th of July. Hope you're enjoying the day. Hope, uh, hope you enjoy it safely and all of that. And also, happy belated Canada Day. It's a few days late for that. And also, happy... 38th wedding anniversary to my parents. They were married 38 years ago on July 4th. So big happy anniversary to them. So this week I have been working on a few things and we'll have a few things to look at. So we're going to take a look at the slab encapsulation thing, which I did the pour on this week. Also take a look at some shop organization stuff that I did. Yes, I do that sometimes. <laughs> and let's take a look at the new project that I'm starting, the spice box caddy thing, which is gonna be over in the guild. So let's jump into it. Let's take a look at my giant slab thing. So the epoxy pour worked out really nicely. Things uh, happened smoothly and nothing leaked out of this, uh, this form, which is probably the greatest victory that uh, you'll ever have if you do one of these. <laughs> So the whole process went really smoothly. The tinting that I did, I think is gonna look pretty good and exactly what I had in mind. It's a little hard to tell right now because of the, uh, the tape in here, but as I was mixing, I kinda got an idea of how much depth I was able to have by using the mixing paddle as sort of a gauge of that. So the total pour ended up being, I think right at six gallons. I had two pails. I had a five gallon pail with four and a half gallons in it. And then I had a second pail that was at uh, a gallon and a half. So it puts it right at six gallons. So I do have some sweet footage of the pour, which I will let roll for you as well. I'm really happy with the, uh, I guess the patterning that happened naturally in the epoxy. I think that looks pretty darn awesome. The, uh, the dams worked out really nicely. The only downside to this, or the only thing to worry about is, uh, it doesn't work if you pour the epoxy directly in here. So you gotta watch where you're pouring. I got a little sloppy with that five gallon pail. It was really heavy and it was really hard to get pouring like in this area. So I did have some spill over, but overall, that whole process went really nicely, and I have some really cool patterning and stuff all through here. So what I really wanted with the, the color is to be able to see down in there. So you can really get a good idea of what's happening with the edge of the slab still, but it does have some kind of fun color. And I used a micro pearl to create this kind of metallic kind of pigment stuff in here. So I did pour this on Sunday, so it's been in the form for four days now. It should be pretty well cured, but I'm going to leave it and give it a whole week just to make sure it doesn't do anything and because I'm not really in a rush. So once the thing gets uh, deformed or demolded, <laughs> I'll give it some more passes with the router sled to flush everything up, to clean everything up, and then we'll get into, I guess, uh, polishing and finishing all of this. So that should be... A fun uh, experience. So in an effort to further organize my shop I've identified the back of the bandsaw as a potential area to store and hang things. So one of the things I did was attach my track saw in a little clip here so I can kind of store that here and have it out of the way and have its own little spot and it's really just really more accessible because it used to be just sitting right here on top of the vacuum and stuff. So I have a quick video I'm making this block that you can check out as well.
So I'm really happy with this. This is a much better use of space than having the back of the saw totally open and not having anything hang from it. So I think having a kind of short little organization video within the shop update might be a decent recurring theme or segment, I guess. So maybe look for those in the future as well because it's kind of fun to do a quick project and throw it into the shop update because uh, we're making the shop a better place. <laughs> Now something else I did was tweak the layout just a little bit. So I've moved the router table, the spindle sander, and the drum sander all the way down the wall. So basically up into the entry door, which leaves me all of this, all this space. This is crazy. There's so, this is so much space uh, of just empty space. So that gives me some more room around the bridge port to work and just makes this area over here feel a lot more open. I'm actually thinking about taking this drum sander and sticking it over there next to the, uh, the cyclone and the metal bandsaw just to kind of get it out of the way. I can park it over there and then if I need to use it, I can wheel it out and use it and whatever. And lastly, I'm getting started on my next guild project, which is going to be like a spice box caddy or a tea box kind of thing. A lot of different purposes or a lot of different potential purposes or uses for this thing. But anyway, it's just a very simple box project. So we're gonna have a main box with nine individual boxes inside of it. So it's gonna be kind of a fun one. I'm making two of them. This is gonna be the main build. So it's gonna have a glass top and a plywood bottom and it's going to be all cherry. The second box is going to be sort of the fun and crazy box. So I have these sections of uh, walnut crotch which will make up the outer, bar, uh, the outer box. And then I have this uh, old piece of walnut here which is going to give me all of the smaller internal boxes as well as a solid top instead of a glass top. So the first videos for these are going to be out tomorrow over in the guild. If you're not familiar with my guild builds those are my more in-depth instructional builds. This is the seventh one of those that I've done and this should be fun just like all the other ones. <laughs> so if you want to check this build out I will leave you a link down in the description. The best time to buy these things is before they start. It is on pre-order now until tomorrow, Friday. So if you're interested in this build, this is the best time to pick it up. And if you bundle it with some other projects, you can save a few dollars as well. So much room back here. <laughs> so that's all I've up to you this week. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is a crib by Nate. It features a walnut frame with oak spindles. The joinery on the frame is biscuits and the spindles use quarter inch dowels to join them to the frame and the front and back connect to the sides with bolts and threaded inserts. Next is the dining table by Andrew. It's five feet in diameter and is made from black walnut with a steel base. The base is welded from 14 gauge sheet steel and it's inspired by Scott Turner. The walnut for the tabletop came from a client's father who was a lifelong woodworker and is now in his 90s. He felled the tree and milled the lumber over 30 years ago. Next is the bench restoration by Jeremy. The bench was originally in white oak, but after poor maintenance over 25 years, it was badly rotten. He cleaned the metal pieces and repainted them and replaced the wooden parts with cherry. All the parts were shaped and sanded and finished with three coats of marine polyurethane. Last of this week is a wine cabinet by Nat. It features 58 mortise and tenons and it's made out of red oak. All the mortises for this project were chopped by hand and the tenons were a combination of hand cut and table saw cut. It's finished with a red oak stain and armor seal semi-gloss. So I think that's all I have for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.